to meet with you and talk to you. And thank you so much for taking the time out. I really appreciate it. Um, hope you're having a great day. Um, Thanks for having us. Well, thank you. So Julie, um, I was reading your notes and I know you were a fan of Mark when you watched his blog and donated. And when um, his death occurred, you were unsure about contacting his parents, but then you, you went ahead and did. And um, obviously you vibed together, which is lovely. And you made an incredible film, but um, what made you really want to tell his story? Yeah, so in 2016, uh, I had a, a friend who was friends with Mark. So we had a mutual friend and she went to grad school with him at Brown University. And she was always posting his videos of him walking barefoot across America to protest climate change. And I don't know what I first thought. I maybe thought, wow, this is really absurd or it kind of just like was puzzling, like the, the headline of it. And then I watched the video and his sense of humor immediately pulled me in. And I was like, this is my wavelength. I am on it, you know? And, and um, you know, the New Yorker likened Mark to Andy Kaufman, which I understand that connection, <laughs> penchant for the absurd. And, you know, at that same time, I was really kind of getting passionate about the idea of climate change being the pressing issue of our time, needing to do something to have better environmental protections. And so just all of those interests kind of came together and Mark kind of embodied all the, these things. And um, so I was just a fan. And then uh, I remember when Donald Trump was inaugurated, I immediately turned to Mark's videos to kind of feel better. And I watched Mark's video day 100 on the road and he's speaking to, um, you know, that we need to keep fighting. And I felt very like uplifted through Mark's message. And then I went on Facebook and saw that he had been killed. And it was, it was that day after Trump's inauguration. So it was just um, a very like emotional weekend for, for even just everyone, the whole country, definitely for Mark's fans and obviously for the people he lo uh, who loved him. And, and so I reached out to Jim and Mary and said, I want to make a film to pay tribute to Mark's life and tell his life story as well as the story of the Barefoot Walk. And Jim and Mary, if I could ask you, um, what made you want to work with Julie? Because I know other filmmakers had contacted you. Yeah. I mean, I think that part of it is, you know, the way that Julie is, she, she's very, um, I don't know, there was this human, there's a warmth to the way that she reached out. Some of the other filmmakers, it felt like it was kind of transactional for them. Yeah. Uh, one in particular who had an assistant, so we never actually talked to the filmmaker, Jeez. we just, everything was done through the assistant, who was a very sweet lady, but yeah. you know, there's a certain part of you that just doesn't want to be handed off to especially at that time, you know, the weeks and the months Absolutely. following Mark's death, you know, we were really reeling. And even three and a half years out, you know, it doesn't get any easier. Um, but I think the way that Julie handled it, you know, we had an initial phone call. It went really well. We got off the phone call, Mary and I, we talked about it. I mean, Mary and I have been together. I mean, we were high school sweethearts, so we've been together for over 40 years. And, you know, to have to go through something like this with someone that you have such a deep, intimate bond with, I don't know, you know, so we've always been people who discuss things with one another. You know, if I had said, geez, I really like Julie, but Mary had said, no, I don't really know, I would have had to sort of step back, but it was like right off, like we both knew. And then sort of the way that Julie handles it to want to come out and spend a weekend, which, you know, it felt... I don't know, you know, I didn't know her. Okay, you're going to come and spend a weekend. You're going to be here. I hope it goes well. And it really did. I mean, you know, I, I was just thinking of this the other day, Julie, how, you know, I, I'm always this way, like, okay, I'm going to meet someone for the first time. So I, I go online, I have to see their picture, like, so I know what they look like. Yeah. And then Julie's uh, is tall, and I could see her at the top of the escalator at the airport. And I go, oh, that's her, and she waves. <laughs> And then, you know, we get in the car and we have this really, for me, a very emotional discussion on the 40 minute drive home for her to meet Mary. But, you know, I, I knew, you know, probably 10 or 15 minutes into the drive that th this was going to go really well. And it did, you know, her, her, um, 
John who came the next morning, you know, and, and just sort of the way that they interacted during the filming, the interviews. I mean, it was a long day, you know, but, but you know, it, 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 there was that weekend was really important in sort of cementing that bond between the two of us. And it's only grown stronger over the course of, you know, the production. And then and we got the chance to do a couple of film festivals together before everything got shut down during the pandemic. And so, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it, and then she had sent us some films that she had done and in watching the films, Aspie Seeks Love and, and Woman on Fire. I mean, you look at those films and you go, wow, this is a very amazing filmmaker who also happens to be very genuine. You know, if, if, if all Julie was was a great filmmaker, you know, that would have been great. But then to, on top of that, you know, just watching her, how she handled herself at the festivals, she's a great interview. She's always on message. You know, you don't always get that total package. No. <laughs> we were very, very fortunate. And I mean, how, you know, how did Mary and I make that decision? You know, I don't know, but we made the right one. It was really recent after his death that you, you all met, which I yeah. didn't realize. Yeah. Um, yeah, I looked back actually in my emails and, um, you know, Mark was killed on January 21st. And I reached out to them in February. And yeah, February. then in March came out and, you know, stayed at their house and we did these long interviews. And I, you know, flew out uh, my cin cinematographer, John Pope, and we had an assistant on site. But, you know, me and Jim and Mary had dinner together and, you know, really spent the time to get to know one another and all be on the same page as collaborators to tell Mark's story, We're all having the same ambition. And, you know, I knew that I could, you know, enter into this multi-year, you know, friendship with them uh, based on like being a fan of Mark's and then the fact that Jim and Mary have so many shared values with Mark and, you know, are social justice minded and really impressive people who I felt like I could just learn a lot from. So it just kind of worked out really well. I have to say to Mary and Jim, so many times during the film, you reminded me of my own parents. There was a part, I think one of you said, you, you never stop worrying about your child as old as they get. And the part about you just wanted him to have a job with benefits. All of that reminded me so much of my own mother and father. So I, it was very endearing to me, very relatable. I, I love that. Um, I think my mark, I think it was so special just because like when the new, the journalist from the New York, um, New York Times, I believe, uh, or was it the New Yorker? Or the New Yorker in the film. New Yorker Hayward, yeah. was talking about it. And although she said they never met, she was so sad and, he just, his, his personality just came across from the screen. You like, you felt like you knew him. Um, and there's just such a joy to him. And I, I just think that was so special. And I'm just thrilled that you made this. But um, it, it's a very rare thing, I think, for somebody to have that in them. Um, yeah, I think it's that kind of childlike wonder that he has where, and that appreciation for everything that he can kind of transmit. It's like, he has this edgy sense of humor in the videos, but at the same time, he can just kind of pick up something off the side of the road. Wow, isn't this cool? I love you. And, and it, it's contagious. His energy and, and positivity is contagious. I love there was a part where he's walking across. I think he's like, I'm on a highway eating hummus and I'm happy to be alive. And I just, it just makes your heart happy. And it kind of, I think it's, it's a good kind of lesson and reminder to us, no matter what's going on, yeah, you are alive and be happy and appreciate everything around you. Um, I just found it so heartwarming. You had a lot of footage, I imagine. Mary and Jim had footage, there's footage online. How did you go about deciding what you wanted to use? Was it a collaborative effort? Yeah, it was uh, difficult. Thing to kind of wade through as a director slash editor, you know, Mark. Oh, you edited uh, too? I edited. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> I edited the film as well. And um, you know, Mark was prolific for a decade. He was on YouTube posting video after video. So there were like five hundred videos on his YouTube account, and then there were a uh, hundred of those were from the Barefoot Walk. Uh, and then in addition to that, Jim and Mary did a great job of over the years documenting, documenting their family and Mark growing up. So there was just so much to pull from. 
And uh, I guess I knew structurally that I wanted the film to go through the walk chronologically from day one to day 100. Of course, there's like a few flashbacks along the way, um, but it just kind of felt like for me as a fan who was watching Mark, you know, upload videos onto Facebook every day in real time seeing, oh, now he's in Pennsylvania, now he's in Ohio. You know, I wanted people to have that experience of, of being present in the moment of his adventure. And um, so, yeah, I think it was just a matter of uh, highlighting, you know, going through those barefoot walk videos and finding the strongest bits. And <laughs> I had a cut that was probably two and a half hours and it went down to an hour and a half at the end of the day. I love too that you included um, some of the home movies from when he was a child and also through college. And I'm very interested in the 50 books that he wrote in a year. I have to say, I was very, I'm very interested in those. And I hope, what, I, I love that as a writer. I love that he wrote 50 books in a year. So I, I think that's such a part of him and I'm glad that you encompassed everything he was. You know, I'm we very, did miss a few things. But you got, you got a lot, which was, it was this very, I, I love all of that. I am just curious also from, um, Mary, if you could kind of talk about um, Mark as a child, um, how, how was he as a child? Did he always have this kind of, he's using a very passionate and very joyful. He was, he was a happy child. We were really lucky. We were young parents. We were living away from our family. And I, Mark would, Mark slept through the night before he was a month old. And oh. he, and moving forward, he was always a joy. He would, he would get on his rocking horse and then he'd wear a baseball cap and goggles and a cowboy hat. And he would just, he had a big personality from a young age. And it, it was a joy to be his mother. I, um, I always say, Mark was the best of me, the best of Jim, and that's what Mark Mark was. And we're, I'm really happy with how the film came out. Uh, Julie did an excellent job, and the whole crew. But we're lucky. We are lucky because Julie told Mark's story, and every time I watch the film, I'm motivated to be a better person. And I'm just really thankful about the film. I, I mean, I, oopsie, why did my thing get so little all of a sudden? It's really little. I just want to make sure it's recording. So I'm so sorry. I've never had to do this before. Oops, what did I do? I'm sorry, I'm having a, a Zoom moment. <laughs> That's okay, take your time. Oh, here we go, yay! <laughs> Sorry, my mom was calling me as I was talking to you. And it's the Do you want Mary to say the last part yes, about you? I'm so sorry about that. Make sure want it. Yeah. Yes, please, please. So sorry about that. So I was really happy with how the film came out and the job that Julie did. And every time I watch the film, I just want to be a better person. Mark is speaking to his mother on the big screen. And I know that other people that watch it, when we went to the film festivals and we heard people laugh and cry and after people just wanted to learn more about Mark. And I'm thankful that we had this wonderful opportunity that Mark's story is being told and moving forward, we did start a nonprofit, um, yes. Mark Bomber Sustainability Fund.org. We want to do good in Mark's name. And, um, and we are doing good in Mark's name. We are. We are doing good in Mark's name. So, yeah. I love that. I think that, along with the film, is just such a beautiful tribute. Um, it really is. And it's, it's important. I just, I, I just see, you know, I just think about him and the impact he had on so many people um, across the world. Even when he was at Brown, I think there was a group of students that were called, they called themselves Bobber, Bobberites or something. Yeah, a lot of the writing students that he had, yeah. you, know, you had to teach a class as a student as part of your MFA 
And there was a piece in the uh, Brown, I, I can't remember if it's called the Daily Herald. And Mark had this very strange, you know, like one time he came in with like an astronaut suit and just lied down in the middle of the class, you know? <laughs> and yet, uh, like his friend Nick, who was actually killed in that fire at the uh, Ghost Ship Collective in Oakland, he had a band called Night Mom and uh, Nick and his drummer, Travis, met and bonded in Mark's class because they had this writing exercise where Mark made everyone hold hands and they had to write something together. And that was how Nick and Travis met one another. You know, and tra uh, both of them. I mean, Night Mom was a really cool band. I, I have a cassette tape uh, of them and, and I wish I could have got to meet Nick. I, and I've actually been playing music myself the last two years and writing some really? songs and carry Mark with me. Every night I get up and perform. I've been mostly playing open mics, but I just think about how in this world, you know, I'm, I'm 58 years old. It's very rare that you meet people that truly change your lives. And you never really expect that person to be your son, right? Uh, and, and, and I think part of it and I, I really want to give props to Mary because this never seems to ever come up when we talk in interviews. I didn't always have a great relationship with my mom. And I think one of the beauty, beauties of the relationship that Mary and Mark had was how she didn't do what so many mothers do to their sons and create these, I don't know, unrealistic expectations or they, they, they hinder them. Mark, had this unconditional love with Mary when the two of them were together. I mean, sometimes I felt like the third wheel. I would sometimes get mad. Like, why does like Mark come home and he's always going to, you know, but I can see that he also had this special relationship with women. He, he wasn't misanthropic. He was a feminist, you know, uh, in the best sense of the word. And that has to do with the fact that he truly had this beautiful love for his mom, unconditional love, the, what we should all cultivate in our young men, right? We hear a lot about Absolutely. men, you know, mentoring young men, but we don't hear enough about a woman's role with yeah. their sons, you know, and how to be a mom, you know, and, and Mary, you know, uh, really embodied that. And, and I think has a lot to do with who Mark became, his gentleness. I mean, he was a giant of a man, stronger than a horse. And yet there was this beautiful gentleness that he had that you don't see. I mean, he wasn't running around bullying people. In fact, he was very anti-bullying, you know, all the way through his life, yeah. you know, and I think that really speaks volumes about, you know, how, how do you co-parent, you know, as a male and a female? I mean, there were times I know, because I was the guy who was always wanting Mark to be tough. Don't be a wimp, don't be a baby. <laughs> and he wasn't, he was tougher than anything, you know? And there were probably times that Mary said, oh my God. And, but you know, she knew to stay out of that piece and I stayed out of her side of things. And you know, and that, I don't know. It's just, I was thinking I about that. that. No, that's, recently. I'm so glad you said that because you know, now that you said that, you, you, I'm thinking about that a lot of times people are talking about having a good male role model for boys, but the part about the mother is not talked about much and it's such an important part. I wonder, and I wonder sometimes, you know, if you look at our national figures, so we can pick on President Trump, which he gets picked on a lot, but, you know, deservedly, right? So um, I wonder sometimes what his relationship with his mom, because yeah, he has such right. a toxic relationship about towards females, you You're know? Right. And, you know, there's this part in the movie where Mark, and I can't recreate it, but, you know, he, where he's ticking off all of these things about who is you know, xenophobic and misanthropic, you know, all of yeah, these things, yeah. you know, and it's just like Mark is just rattling that off because he had this sort of visceral dislike, not as, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bad person and I hate people. It was just like, there was something about Donald Trump that was like, Mark was like the anti-Trump, you know? Yeah, it was like the opposite. Was goodness yeah. about him, you know, and, and I don't know. And it's, you know, Rabbi Krishna wrote the beautiful book, you know, why bad things happen to good people. Yeah, I know. And I sometimes think, why do good things happen to bad people and sort of the mysteries That's of true. life, right? And That's you can make yourself mad trying to think about these things. Um, yeah. No, it's it's all very valid points. It's very interesting. Um, I love, and I think what's very inspiring about Mark is just his passion, because I think no matter what it is, 
arts, I think especially people in the arts, you have this passion for certain things that's almost um, favorite, like you have to do it. And and he he walked the walk, literally, <laughs> but like he, he practiced what he preached. And I, I love that he was so passionate about it and he put it out. I mean, that's beautiful. That's art to me. And that's the point of art to me, I think. Um, and I just see him as inspired. And with this film, just reaching an even bigger audience. So I'm so glad, Julie, you made this because I think there's a lot to be learned from him. And I think he probably inspires a lot of people who are not, especially right now, feeling isolated and not having the best time. Um, yeah, and you know, we're we're not telling everyone to go and walk barefoot across the country. Of That's unrealistic. And you know, and Mark did uh, train and read about the barefoot. And he talked about lifestyle. It. Yeah. And yeah, he read Born to Run. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and he, he really built up his feet so he could physically take this task on. And, you know, he successfully uh, walked 700 miles. It was actually a little over 700 miles during this trip. Uh, and w at the time he was killed, you know, his feet were doing fine. That wasn't the issue. Um, the issue was that this world is not safe for pedestrians. And, you know, that's one of the issues. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think what we are trying to get out to people is this idea that you can make some modification in your lifestyle uh, that's going to pay off down the road in the form of protecting the planet, right? So if that's getting more towards a vegetarian, vegan lifestyle, and if you can't do it fully, even if it's one day a week, just being more mindful about what you're consuming, um, maybe put solar panels on your roof, maybe have one less kid, maybe drive less, you know, or get involved in a local organization uh, and work towards policy changes. And there's something we can all do, right? Oh, <laughs> and that's, you know, that's what I take away from Mark's story. Like, it's intimidating to be there as a director, editor, looking through this footage and saying, like, I want to be like Mark, but I'm not as brave as he is. And but okay, here's a piece I can latch on to. And, you know, the fact that he was a vegan, he really brought that message out in a, in a fun, different way, I think, yeah. with some of his speeches on the road about veganism. And not over, not the tip, typical, you think someone's going to be like preaching at you. It's very, very humorous, very relatable. Um, he really did. And it, it does show you that, because a lot of people will complain or be upset with the status quo of what's going on. But you really have to do something in whatever little way you can to make a difference, to actually change things. Um, and like you said, you don't have to, you know, we're not all gonna be as brave as Mark and we're not, and not nearly ever gonna be as smart as him. <laughs> um, but in our own little ways, we, f we can find things to be um, proactive. And I, what do, um, Jamiri, what do you hope that people take away from the film? Well, I, mean, I think Mark's message about caring about the earth, I think, is important. I, I hope they also see that, um, I mean, Mark had this sort of very kind of uh, radical compassion in a way. You know, I think he genuinely cared about people. I think the film brings out the fact that we actually have more in common than we have uh, mm -hmm. differences. You know, you could see the goodness of people who I think may have thought Mark was homeless, yeah. being without shoes and didn't quite understand why someone would be walking without shoes. And, you know, the stopping, the people who stopped to give him, you know, like a ham sandwich or something. Got a dollar from the... <laughs> but, but, you know, their heart was in the right place, yeah. you know, and, and, and that, you know, there, there was so much of that film where you look at it and you come away and you, you I don't know, it, it seems like sometimes the world can be so brutal. I think the pandemic I'd hope they would bring out the best in people. I'm not sure it has. Yeah. You know, I work in a medical call center and I have seen so, so much ugliness from people. Like Amazing. you sit there and it's like, do you really think other people aren't having a difficult time right now? I mean, do you, do you only think that, you know, like they, they, they demand their prescription that day and like, like, come on folks, we're doing the best we can. We're underwater, our docks are underwater. But they don't care. It's like, I want my damn thing now. I don't care. I don't care about it. Because one time I said to a woman, I, it was a big mistake. I said, 
you do know that we're in the middle of a pandemic, right? I do not care. I don't care about anybody else. I only care about me. And I, I, I didn't say it. It's a good thing I didn't because she would have bit my head off again. But I wanted to say, yeah, it's quite obvious, ma'am. You, you really only care about you. you know, and I can't say, oh, by the way, you know, I'm dealing with grief every day and you're actually triggering my grief and loss. And I, you know, because some, you know, and I'm a total opposite of Mark. I do have my days where I go, you know what? People really don't care. People don't care about you. So there are times I used to share my story now and I just kind of keep it to myself. Other than when I go out and play open mic nights, people seem pretty receptive. That's been a good experience. I love that you're doing music. I love that. I love that. If you ever come to California, I want to know because I will go see you play. All right. When, when, I, when, I, when I do my national tour, I will hit the West I will want, I want, I, but I love that you're doing music because I, I just love music and I think it's so healing and amazing. But I think you're right. This, there is kind of like a nastiness right now, um, which so is- Mark is the, he's the antithesis the opposite, of that. Yeah. So you watch the movie and you say, okay, I can be better. Like Mary says, we can yeah. all be better. Absolutely. I mean, he just seemed to have like a joy, like an infectious joy to me. Like that's somebody I would want you to- always felt better. I emailed Mark every single day. Sometimes I would just say to Mark, you know, Mark, you can always tell me to F, you know, shut the F up and just, you know, he'd always say, I would never do that, dad. You know, but I, I could tell, you know, like sometimes I would just push too much through the interwebs to him, but then he would come back to it, you know? And the beauty of, you know, these digital communications is I have all of these messages because Mark went on Gmail in like 2009. So I have, you know, mm -hmm. almost 10 years worth of communication. I can look back, like I'd always send him a message on his birthday. I tell him a story about when he was born or something about his birthday or some story. And, you know, I can go back and I look, oh, that year I said that, you know, and these beautiful communications. And the beauty is, you know, as hard as it is to have lost him, both Mary and I talked to him on the day before he was killed. And we got to say all the things to each other that we needed to say that I, I told him I loved him, told me back. He was proud of me. I told him I was proud of him. You know, it's all of these things that you, if you hadn't said those things, you would have regretted it. But luckily, we, we got to say these things. We got to see him, the, you know, the Sunday before he left on his walk. We drove to Providence. We were busy moving and getting ready to move. And luckily, we just got in the car and we went down and we got to meet Otta. And we spent a beautiful afternoon with Mark and Otta. And, you know, that time together, that was the last time we saw him in person, you know? I love, that's beautiful. I just think that it gives me chills, but it's beautiful. It really is. And I could see where his kindness comes from because both you and Mary seem so warm and loving. And I think it's a gift to share your story because I know that it's a very vulnerable and it, I can't imagine hard is. So I thank both of you. Um, Mary, what, what do you want people to remember most about Mark? That Mark Bomber lived, that he existed. That's the biggest thing I want. Um, and having this film, it just helps many, many other people learn about Mark and learn about his message. And I guess only having one child that, you know, he was it, he was our world. And I just don't want Mark to be forgotten. And, you know, all the different things that Mark stood for. He really was such a compassionate, he was everyone's friend. That's the thing. After he was killed, all these people came out of the woodwork and were, and they're like, oh, I'm, I was Mark's best friend. And then another person said, no, I was Mark's best friend. And Mark was just loved by so many people. Just also, what do I want known? Try and make the world a better place. Do something to make a difference. That's what I want. I love that. And I don't think he'll be forgotten because such a special, special person. And when you think of love, that's a, he like embodied love and compassion and genuinely wanted the world a better place. And that's a beautiful thing. And that in itself, I think, is so inspiring, um, especially right now. 
I mean, I can't think of a more inspiring story right now when people are not having the easiest time. Honestly, sincerely, like it made me make my heart happy. Yeah. Just to, just that's to it. It. I, you know, I think people need things to latch on to. You need something. You can't always live in a state of deprivation. You know, you can't yeah. have everything taken away from you. You know, it's hard. I understand some of the reasons why, but I, but I feel like at some point we've got to find a way to come back together because if Absolutely. we can't do that, Absolutely. you know, we're, we're in this mode right now. It's very easy to control a group of people that are all isolated, you know, and, and, and that's, you know, activism 101 is, you know, finding a way to bring together people in a communitarian sort of way. And Mark was very, and Fang and, you know, the activist organizations that Mark was a part of were very much communitarian and they're probably having a tough time right now with mm -hmm. all of this, you know? So, uh, you know, it, it's, I, I'm just hoping maybe, I, I don't know. I, I just have to stop. Mary will tell me, don't go off the rails again, Jim. So I won't. <laughs> Julie, um, We've talked a lot about Mark, but um, do you have anything you want to add to this that you hope that your film takes out to the world? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that it's the perfect time for the film to come out. Uh, you know, we were hoping the film would come out before the election um, to help refocus our minds back on the issue of climate change. Uh, and you know, Mark really hits home how urgent this issue is. We really only have a handful of years left to kind of make some drastic changes. Um, and I think, you know, Mark gives you a lot of arguments in the film for, you know, what climate change is doing to the planet and things that we can do to, to make things better. So uh, I hope everyone watches it. Uh, you can pre-order it now. It's going to be available to actually watch on October 27th. And, um, you know, if you go to barefootdocumentary.com, you can find us like through that on Facebook and Twitter. And we're very like uh, responsive to, to people who want to chat and connect with us further about the film. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're just kind of excited. We just came off of the film festival tour and, and the film is, you know, has been and will be screening internationally. And, and we're kind of shocked by how the response has been incredible even beyond the US because it's kind of this American road movie but you know it's playing in Australia and Estonia and oh, Italy amazing. and so it's been really uh well received and it is I love it just the idea of just just walking is kind of amazing like something so simple is always profound Mm -hmm. um, come up with this thing where we talk about Mark still walking and he is he's still walking yes you're right you're he's right yes. walking, so. I don't know if I told you already that he walked over 700 miles on this crazy uh right so in New York when, yes which I he's a brave he's a brave soul I was like oh my I was worried when he was in New York because I used to live there I'm like it's very worried but he was good his feet were in remarkable shape after That's walking. one of my favorite scenes in the film is him walking barefoot in Times Square and through the yes. subway system and you know obviously there's a gross factor there of, and when he's like washing his feet off in the hotel room but he made it he did okay he didn't get like too cut up I would that's what I was worried about I was worried about his feet getting cut up but he it was I mean I, I have to say you did put a lot into that he did prepare for it just wasn't like I'm gonna decide to walk one day he did put a lot of thought into it he was safe when he was walking he had the reflector vest on even when he got hit he was doing everything you're supposed to do when you're walking um which it's such a tragedy but um he was very safety conscious which i think is an important thing too to be in the film um yeah. so i did appreciate that um i just Think it's lovely it is just personality just shines through and i think he definitely lives on um and this is just one way of helping that but he's he's like a he's a star like that just you want to you just want to hug him when you he, he talks and it just it just made me feel really good and hopeful and i think it will inspire a lot of people thank but, you
Thank Thanks you all so much. Um, it's been lovely talking to all of you and I, I really appreciate um, all your honesty and just being able to present this film I think is, is a lovely, I mean, I think it's a gift for us and it's a beautiful tribute to him. Thank, thank you, Jennifer. You so thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Oh, thank you. It's been so honestly so nice. Um, and I was just so glad to watch it and it really did lift my spirits and I think it will lift a lot of people's spirits. I really do. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank Have you so much, Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Emily. I see you down there. <laughs> <laughs> just listening. I um, never know with these recordings, like when to break the fourth wall, you know? Oh, I don't either. <laughs> I've messed them up. <laughs> I mean, I'm at my friend's house because I had my computer charger. Just <laughs> so. <laughs> One day I, I will like your, I like your funky background though. Hey, oh, this is a really cool telescope. <laughs> it's part of one. Oh, cool. There's there's fun stuff in here. <laughs> but thank you guys. Thank and you so much, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, have a, great... have a good one. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.